Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to Maths Lesson 3. In this tutorial, we'll be going through the different types of index laws and how to use indices, including standard form. There have been six questions on indices since 2009, and therefore this topic is very important. To begin with, we'll have a look at standard form. Standard form is a way of expressing very big or very small numbers. It's given in the form of a times 10 to the power of n. n tells us the number of times the decimal place moves. If n is positive, it means the decimal place moves to the right. If n is negative, it means the decimal place moves to the left. a should only have one number before a place. So, if you have 25.66 times 10 to the 5, this is not standard form. It instead should say 2.566 times 10 to the 6. So therefore, in effect, a should always be less than 10. So as we mentioned, we use standard form to express very large numbers or very small numbers. Have a look at these two examples. 6 times 10 to the 5. Well, we have to move the decimal place 5 times to the right. So, as you move to the right each time, you create a zero. So therefore, we have five zeros after the six, making 600,000. For six times 10 to the minus five, we move to the left each time. Therefore, we have four zeros before the six to form 0 0.00006. We will now go through some index laws, which are very important. First of all, when multiplying together two indices of the same number, you should add together the powers. So for example, 6 to the power of 7 times 6 to the power of 5 equals 6 to the power of 12. This only works when the number is the same. So 6 here is the same. The powers don't have to be the same, but the number being powered on has to be the same. Similarly, when you're dividing, you can minus the indices of the power. So for example, 6 to the 7 divided by 6 to the 5 is equal to 6 to the 2. Again, this only works for indices of the same number. Here, 6 is constant throughout, so this works. Rule 3. When raising a power to a power, you can multiply together the powers, even for different numbers. So 6 to the power of 7, or to the power of 7, is equal to 6 to the power of 49. This would even work if the powers were different. So if it was 6 to the power of 4, or to the power of 5, it would be equal to 6 to the power of 4 times 5, which is 6 to the power of 20. 4. When raising to a negative power, you want to flip the number over. So if they give you 6 to the power of minus 4, this is the same as 1 over 6 to the power of 4. Here are a few more tips. Firstly, when you deal with fractions, you have to raise the power of both the top and the bottom. So, half to the power of 3 is equal to 1 cubed over 2 cubed. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. 5 to the power of 0 is 1. 50 to the power of 0 is 1. A million to the power of 0 is 1. Anything to the power of 1 is just a number on its own. So, 5 to the power of 1 is equal to 5, 15 to the power of 1 is 15, and so on. And sometimes, they'll give you powers as fractions. If something is to the power of a half, 
it means it's the square root. So 4 to the power of half would be the square root of 4, which is 2. Similarly, a third is the cube root, and so on. And finally, sometimes you can combine negative powers with fractions. So if they give you 8 to the power of minus 1 third, this means that it's 1 divided by 8 to the power of third, which is the same as 1 over the cube root of 8. Let's have a go at a question. Question 1. Pause the video and have a go. The answer here is C. You want to cube each individual term. So first of all, let's cube 0 0.5. It's quite difficult to cube a decimal, so therefore it'd be good to cube a half as a fraction instead. A half cubed is equal to 1 cubed over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. So therefore, we have 1 eighth to begin with, times x squared to the power of 3. This means that it's x to the power of 6. Then you have y to the power of minus 2 cubed. This means y to the power of minus 6, which is equal to 1 over y to the 6. So therefore, we have 1 over 8 times x to the 6 times 1 over y to the 6, which gives us overall c, which is x to the power of 6 over 8y to the power of 6. Question 2. Pause the video and have a go. The answer here is B. Remember, you can only add together powers of the same numbers. Here, you have 3 to the power of C times 27 to the power of D, which equals 3 to the power of E. You can't add up C and D because 3 and 27 are different. But you know that 27 is the same as 3 cubed. And therefore you could say that 3 to the power of C times 3 cubed or to the power of D is equal to 3E. You can expand out the 3 cubed to the power of D to give 3C, so 3 to the power of C times 3 to the power of 3D equals 3 to the power of E. And then you can add together C plus 3D to equal E. Thank you for watching this tutorial on algebra. Thank you for watching this free BMAT tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock the rest of the 100 tutorials and all 8 ebooks, click here now. Medic Mind. Motivate. Mentor. Maximize. Thank you for watching this free BMAT tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock the rest of the 100 tutorials and all 8 ebooks, click here now.